An enterprise architecture allows us to control and manage change in the business by looking at the business for a number of different points of view and time frames. Any collection of views may be thought of as an architecture. Architectures may be used to describe the technical aspects of a system, the physical aspects, the logical aspects, in fact anything that meets the requirements of an interested stakeholder. By modelling these views and applying it to our business, it's possible to create an enterprise architecture, or EA. The thing about EA, however, is that everybody wants one, but the question is, why? I know an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. Why did the old lady swallow a fly? What was she trying to achieve? Why do you want an EA? What will it be used for? Who will be using it? It's essential that the why of an EA is considered, and by this we really mean carrying out a proper requirements exercise, rather than just generating a wish list. Bear in mind that there will be many stakeholders interested in the EA, and each of them potentially has a different point of view on what the EA is all about, how it can be used, and what benefits it will bring. I know an old lady who swallowed a spider, it wriggled and jiggled about inside her. When confronted with a fly in the stomach, the temptation is to look for tried and tested approaches to fly removal, such as spiders. But is this suitable? When confronted with a topic like EA, the temptation is to look for best practice approaches that people have followed before, such as Zachman, Modaf, Togaf and so on. But each of these best practice approaches must be tailored for any business and their suitability assessed. There's no point in simply applying a perceived solution to a problem when the problem is not understood in the first place. Just because a particular technique works well for one business does not necessarily mean it will work for another. I know an old lady who swallowed a bird, cat and dog. Spiders in the stomach bring their own problems. There may be a clearly understood and logical progression of eating slightly larger animals in order to solve the problem, but does the old lady actually understand the nature of her problem, or for that matter, her own physiology? Once the why of an EA is understood, it's essential to be able to relate this to the business. Key to understanding the business is having a common understanding of key terms and concepts. Ask three different people exactly what a service is, for example, and it's highly probable that you will receive at least two different definitions. What's a capability? What's a process? How do they relate together? How do people fit in? How do these allow us to realise our business goal? And for that matter, what is a business goal? All these key terms and contexts must be defined, usually in the form of an ontology. I know an old lady who followed a goat and a cow. Goats are renowned for eating anything, but eating dogs? Cows are herbivores, so eating of goats is simply not consistent with a cow's normal behaviour. By focusing too much on identifying larger and larger animals, is the old lady losing sight of her goals and losing touch with reality? Given that architectures are all about views, it's surprising that EA is often considered from a very narrow point of view where only the IT aspects of an EA are produced. However, there's far more to EA than just IT. The EA will be visualised from a number of different views. Views are actually very easy to generate, but there must be a reason why the views are needed. It's all too easy to generate a set of random views that are not contributing to meeting the requirements of the EA. Also, these views must be consistent with one another and form a true model, or all we end up with is a set of pictures. I know an old lady who swallowed a horse. She's dead, of course. There are a few points here. One, understand why. Two, speak a common language. Three, views must have a purpose. Four, everything must be consistent. Pre-existing solutions are great, but bear in mind that any solution will lend itself to a particular problem. And simply applying bigger and bigger solutions, fly, spider, bird, cat, dog, goat, cow, and horse, is not necessarily the best approach. Also, it should be remembered that whatever solution you throw at a problem, it will come with its own set of constraints. It's all too easy to end up with a house full of dead bodies, hay and horse dung.